Hey everyone, this is Slimin. Today's video is going to be kind of an addendum to my original Celestron focus motor installation. Celestron reached out to me and let me know that some people are having stalling issues after they install their focus motor. So today, um, I'm going to be uh, doing another install of the focus motor, but at the steps where those issues are likely to occur, I'm going to discuss why they occur and how to mitigate them. And normally the problem comes with centering. So if things aren't centered, that's really where you run into the issues. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump right in and install this. One important thing to mention before we start is Celestron sent me the new version of the focus motor for this video. So uh, previously the old uh, focus motor version was not compatible with the nine and a quarter inch Edge HD. Well, Celestron listened to their customers and they basically just redesigned the housing a little bit and shaved off some material here. So the new version of the focus motor is now compatible with the nine and a quarter inch Edge HD. The three essential things that you'll need for installing the focus motor are a screwdriver, hex wrench, and normal wrench. However, these all come with a focus motor, so you should be good. Uh, I just like to use scissors, a uh, flathead, and electric tape for one step that I find it helpful, but you certainly don't need those. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is remove your original rubber focuser knob. And this is actually the step that I use the electric tape, um, the scissors, and the flathead for. Uh, I can never get mine off just by pulling it. If you can get it off by pulling it, great, but I never can. So I usually just stick a little bit of electric tape to cover the orange plate so I don't mar it when I pry it off with this flathead. So I'm just going to get under this and uh, pry it off here. Oh, there we go. All right, there we go, and we exposed the focuser shaft. Now, we don't need that anymore. Now that's done, we just remove the three screws holding the focuser plate on. and remove the focuser plate. All right, so with the plate off, um, I would like to discuss uh, the first couple of issues you run into with stalling if you, if you install things wrong. Uh, so you have the focuser shaft in the bearing here, and you can see it, it can move around. Um, it's important that you keep this centered, and if you think about the reasons why, obviously you don't want to be pushing on your primary mirror at an angle as you're focusing. Um, that's gonna probably cause some stalling issues with your focuser, but even more importantly is the focuser plate itself. So basically there's two different ones that, that you'll have. You can see the, the plate on the left has a larger diameter in the center. So this is for the bigger like C11, C14 telescopes. The one on the right is for the smaller telescopes like the C8. But think about it, and I'm going to exaggerate this a lot, but if you screw your bolts down really really tight without you know adjusting them you're inevitably going to tilt this plate if you you know if you put one in and screw it down really really tight it's going to push push the other sides up and if you do that now again this is exaggerating the tilt but if your focuser goes over that it's going to be grabbing the focuser shaft at an angle it won't be grabbing it straight it'll be tilted and that tilt is going to cause the focus motor to not turn. So that's one big issue of stalling, is just installing the plate wrong and with everything not centered. So you wanna make sure the focuser shaft is centered with the plate and that when you install the plate itself, that you make sure those bolts are equal and so that you don't get a tilt to the plate itself. So I purposely tighten this one pretty much all the way down and there is a 
it's completely flat over here, but there's a big gap over here. So yeah, that's a really obvious tilt right there. Okay, so once all three bolts are in and the focuser plate is being held down, um, I like to just unscrew each one just about a turn and loosen up the plate. That way I can ensure that all three are pretty much holding the focuser plate on with the same load. Um, Celestron actually recommends that you do this uh, part uh, with the OTA pointing towards the ground, and that's just so gravity holds the plate against the OTA. So I'm just going to hold it with my finger and then just give each one a little bit of a, a turn until things start to tighten up. And you do not need to crank these down, um, otherwise your focus motor will stall. And this is probably the primary reason why the focus motor stalls is because people people uh, crank these down too much. So make sure everything's centered. So I'm looking down at eye level here. Everything looks centered here with the focuser shaft in the plate. Uh, the focuser plate itself does not have any tilt to it. It's nice and flat against the OTA. And so this should uh, still turn. Yep, so it focuser shaft still turns nice and easily. So that's exactly what we want. And then the last step, just to ensure that everything is installed properly, you want to take the focuser shaft and try and move it around. So move, try and move that uh, focuser up and down around. Mine is not moving at all, so uh, that is installed properly. If this was moving around, uh, it would not. Your bolts would not be tight enough, so you'd need to tighten them a little bit more. So if your focuser shaft still spins, and your bearing and your your focuser shaft don't move, then you've installed the cover plate correctly. Okay, so moving right over to the focus motor itself now. Uh, the next step is pretty easy, uh, but it's crucial that you do it the right way because if you don't, you can run the risk of actually uh, breaking your focus motor. So, this is unlikely to happen for most people, but I just thought I'd point it out just in case. Uh, so before you start, basically, what we need to do is we need to take the wrench and move this white line on the uh, coupler on the motor into this arrow range here. And what that's going to do is that's going to move these bolts to a position that we can access them once the focus motor is on the telescope. So that's primarily what we need to do in this step. However, if you use the wrench to move this white line into that range and something is just not giving and it's just really stuck, possibly what may have happened is the focus motor coupling bolt this tightening bolt here may have been unscrewed a little bit and when that rotates, when you rotate the wrench, this might come down and hit the housing. And if you force it, uh, you run the risk of stripping a gear, breaking a gear, and pretty much um, breaking your focus motor. So what you just want to make sure of is that this uh, bolt is just not sticking out into the area that the focuser housing is. So just screw it in before you start this step, and it should pretty much already be screwed in, but you'll just want to make sure that that's not sticking out at all, and then you'll be okay. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get the wrench and just move this white line into that range here. Perfect. Since I'm using a smaller Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, the next thing I need to do is install the adapter sleeve into the focuser so that I can grasp the focuser shaft. If you have larger Schmidt cast grains like a C11 or C14, you don't need to use this adapter sleeve, but it's easy enough to install. Uh, there is just a, a little line up there for a bolt, so you just line it up and then use the bolt that is included to secure that. And this is precisely why we need access to that set screw that I was talking about in the previous step because once this goes on to the focuser shaft, that set screw will tighten down this adapter sleeve onto the shaft. 
Once you've installed the adapter sleeve, uh, you just want to take this set screw and get it started. And the last thing uh, I like to do before I um, put the focuser onto the actual telescope is just uh, loosen this just a little bit because I tightened it earlier. The next step is to actually mount the motor focuser onto the telescope. And so to do that you're going to use these two bolts here and here. And you can kind of pick which orientation you want the, the focuser by using different screw holes. So if you want it, you know, straight, go. you can go right ahead. If you want it off to the side or even sideways, you certainly can do that. I usually just go vertical because I use an equatorial mount and I just find that to be easiest. But really, there's a lot of different holes that you can use. Um, just make sure, like I said, everything is centrally lined up and that applies to the focuser as well. So when you tighten everything down, make sure you don't tighten uh, one of these bolts way more than the other because you're going to get tilt if you do that and your focuser won't operate properly. So really the theme of this whole installation, if you're avoid wanting to avoid those stalling issues, just make sure everything is lined up properly and you don't have any tilts in the system. So uh, Celestron recommends that, again, you point the OTA towards the ground when you do this just because gravity will help pull everything together. So I'm just going to tighten these down. And now with both bolts tightened, just like the cover plate, I'm going to loosen them just a little bit. Just do little, little turns till everything tightens up. When you're done, you can check your work. You look here, uh, you don't see any, uh, any air or any tilting between the plate and the uh, focuser housing. And then if you check the other side, uh, you see the same thing. Okay, and so the final step, if you're using a, a large schmidt cassegrain telescope, is just to uh, tighten the coupling bolt. So get that nice and tight. And then if you're using a smaller telescope, uh, just finish tightening the set screw. Okay, so with those bolts tightened down, the focus motor installation is now complete. I do have one warning for you though, and that's just, if your focus motor is not turning or it's stalled and it's just not working, don't try and force it with the wrench. That is a sure way to break a gear or break something internally in the focus motor and render it useless, essentially. Uh, the other thing is you don't want to use the wrench while the focus motor is plugged in and turned on. Um, and so really, if you're having stalling issues, things aren't working right, the way to fix it is to basically remove the focus motor off the telescope, start from scratch, take the cover plate off, reinstall the whole thing and just take care of each step that you make sure everything is lined up. And if you do that, you shouldn't have stalling issues and the installation should go smoothly. So with that being said, I don't feel like any installation video is complete without a trial run. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and head outside. All right, let's go ahead and test it out. All right, well that is how you successfully install the Celestron focus motor. If you've had stalling problems in the past, I hope this installation video helped. And if you don't know how to get the focuser menu on the Celestron hand controllers, be sure to see my videos on how to update the Celestron hand controllers using CFM. If you were interested in seeing the full review of the focus motor, um, I have that available as well. Or if you want a more detailed installation video, you can see that too. And as always, thanks so much for watching in Clear Skies.